Welcome back to our three-part video series on radio communications, and this is part three, meaning we are gonna be talking about the radio communications recommended for a level three trip. Now, if you're just joining us, I highly recommend you click this link right here and go back and watch part one, and after that, watch part two. Also, if you need a refresher on what we mean by level one, level two, and level three trips, click this link and go back and watch our trip planning video series where we talk about kind of the different levels of trip. Now, to recap, a level three trip means you are going to be off grid. You're gonna be out in the middle of nowhere, in the boondocks, in the boonies, way out in left field, way out in left field. It's one of those lefts, I don't know. But you're gonna be way out there, you're gonna be off the grid. And that means your primary form of communication which is the cell phone is not really going to be doing you much good. So even if you have a cell phone booster with one of these really nice external antennas, it's probably still not going to help you because this thing will not give you signal where there is none. The first go-to device for off-grid communication that we're going to recommend is this little guy right here. This is the Garmin InReach Mini. Now, the big advantage of satellite communication devices like this is they're talking to satellites in space. They're way up out there, meaning mountains, buildings, trees, all of that kind of stuff isn't going to interfere with the signal. As long as you can see sky, so can this. The other nice thing about the InReach Mini is in the event of emergency, they have this little SOS button that you can hit. It'll transfer a signal to an underground bunker somewhere and they will send help. The other nice thing about the InReach Mini is that you can pair it with a phone or a tablet, meaning you can actually send a simple text message from that device through the InReach Mini out to the world. So it makes it really, really nice. The other cool thing about the InReach series is that there's a website that your friends can track where you're at. So if you're on a long distance journey and you're just kind of out there meandering and instead of giving your friends and family updates all the time, they can log into that website and this thing will just kind of leave a little beacon every now and then and your friends can log in and see where you're at. So for off-grid communication, satellite communication devices like the InReach are very, very cool. Another important thing to remember about the InReach is that it is subscription based. Now you can either do an annual subscription covering you for the whole year, or you can pay per month whenever you're out and about. So if you just wanna pay for one month cause you're doing a short trip, that's fine. You can do one month and you're good to go. Now, one of the other things that's available is insurance. So if you do hit that SOS button, it can defray the cost of that really, really expensive rescue bill. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Now our radio clearance, over. So when it comes to choosing radios for a level three trip, there's really gonna be two options that are gonna be very common, and that is gonna be GMRS and ham or amateur radio. Now we covered a lot of the different radio options in GMRS in the last video. So to kind of see that overview, you can click this link here and go back and watch the level two video. All of those same things apply here on a level three trip. The other popular family of radios for overland enthusiasts is going to be ham or amateur radio. Now this is where most people get intimidated because with ham radio, not only are there licenses, but there are also tests. There are three levels, each with progressively more privileges and also progressively more responsibilities. Now, I'm not gonna cover all of the intricacies in that because again, I'm not here to answer every single question, but I at least wanna get you guys pointed in the right direction and give you enough information that if this is a road you wanna go down, you can make an informed decision. Now, one of the reasons that amateur radios are popular with overland enthusiasts is because when you have an amateur radio license, it really opens up the amount of wattage that you can broadcast on. Now, if you go back to some of the earlier videos, we mentioned how a CB is limited to about four watts. FRS radios are limited to either a half watt or two watts, depending on which channel they're on. Handheld GMRS radios are limited to five watts. Mobile GMRS radios are limited to 50 watts. Amateur radio, well, you can broadcast on some ridiculously high wattages up into the hundreds of watts. But I need a nuclear reaction to, to generate the 1.21 gigawatts of electricity. 1.21 gigawatts! Meaning when you're out in somewhere really, really remote, 
off grid so you don't have access to cell phone or anything like that, chances are with a powerful enough uh, amateur radio, you can hit one of those repeaters in the area. So that's kind of, again, one of the reasons why amateur radio is so popular amongst overland travelers. Now with ham radio, the most popular radios you're gonna find are what's known as dual band radios, meaning they can talk on VHF and UHF. Now VHF means very high frequency and that covers the frequency range of 144 megahertz to 148 megahertz. Ultra high frequency covers 420 megahertz to 450 megahertz. Now you might be wondering why would I wanna go through all the trouble to get a ham radio license? Well, the reason being is these radios are not intended just for anybody just to pick up the box, turn the radio on and use it. These things are not channelized. So an FRS or a GMRS or a CB radio comes pre-programmed with channels. These do not, meaning you actually have to physically dial in the frequency that you wanna monitor or you wanna talk on. And because of that, and because there are so many other radio frequencies out there, you've got airline frequencies, you've got maritime frequencies, you've got emergency services and military, part of the licenses and the exams that you take ensure that you know which frequencies you can talk on and which ones you cannot talk on. Now it should be noted that these dual band radios should not transmit on CB, FRS, or GMRS radio frequencies. Keyword being should. Another thing with the FCC licenses for amateur radios is as you progress through the three tiers of licenses, you get more and more privileges. Meaning when you get to the expert level, you can actually do things like APRS packeting, meaning you can actually send little packets of digital information through the radio, which opens up a huge, a wild world of possibilities. Things like GPS, pictures, phone calls, all these cool little tricks that you can do with amateur radio. So if you're somebody that's gonna be spending a lot of time on these level three trips, then this ham radio might be a road that you wanna go down. Because again, just like with GMRS radios, ham radios have access to repeaters. And there are tons and tons and tons of repeaters spread all throughout the country, all throughout the world. So ham radio is definitely one of those things where if you're gonna be out there on these level three trips a lot, it's something that you want, might wanna look into. Now, I will also make another note. You do not need a license to own an amateur radio. And you also don't need a license to use an amateur radio in the event of an emergency. So if there is a threat to life or property, you can legally use an amateur radio even if you don't have a license. Now, one of the reasons why you might wanna buy one of these radios, even if you're not sure if you're gonna get your license, is when you go to someplace like a national park, a lot of times at the ranger station, they're gonna have a frequency there that the park rangers are actually monitoring. So like when I was out west and I went to Arches National Park, they had a sign that the ranger's monitoring this frequency. I programmed that frequency into my radio and then I turned the radio off and I stuck it in my bag. And when I was hiking around, if something were to happen, sure, I could pull my in-reach out and I could call somebody in a bunker far, far away, or I could pull my radio out and I could try to reach one of the park rangers that's actually right there in the park that I'm in. Again, when there is a threat, to life or property, you can use an amateur radio in the event of an emergency without a license. So it's kind of one of those things where if you're like, well, maybe I wanna dip my toe into this and I'm not 100% sure, it's really not all that expensive either. An amateur radio like this is only gonna cost you about 30 or 40 bucks. And if you decide, hey, I'm gonna dive into the deep end and go all the way and get my license, take the test and do all that fun stuff, great. If not, you at least have another fallback in the event of an emergency. So we're really just scratching the surface, helping to make you make an informed decision as to what radio you're gonna buy to best support your trip. Now, if you're looking for more information on amateur radio, check the show notes down below for some links that'll kind of get you pointed in the right direction to answer some more of those technical related questions. To wrap things up, again, on a level three trip, you are gonna be spending most of your time off grid in remote territory where you don't have access to things like cell phones, tow trucks, and emergency services. This is where having options for communication really, really help. 
having that redundancy is not gonna hurt. So most likely, you're gonna have things like cell phones, cell phone boosters, GMRS radios, amateur radios, satellite devices like an inReach, and that is fine because again, you're gonna be out there all by your lonesome in the middle of nowhere and having options is always a good thing. But we're not saying you need all of them. This video series is just trying to help you make an informed decision, figuring out what you need based on the trip that you're gonna take. For a deeper dive, stay tuned for a Q&A video where we're gonna be looking at some of the questions that we've been asked, things like radio selection, installation tips, different upgrades that you can make to radios like antennas and other accessories. So thank you for watching this series on radios. As I said at the beginning, I am super enthusiastic about this been a little bit of a uh, radio electronics geek for a while. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. Let us know that you liked it. If you're not already subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And again, thanks for coming and hanging out.